Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. You know how it goes around here. We start off with this little trigger warning. Even though Sobcast the Podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, we will be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and dowries. Ooh, that makes me mad just saying it. Ooh. Well, moving on from that, I wanted to start this episode off with a business proposal. Yes, I'm proposing to you. Uh, it's a very big deal, and um, I hope you're surprised happily our our friends are taking pictures in the bushes <laughs> so i can put them on facebook just kidding uh no actually i was hoping we could just pretend like this is an episode of shark tank so i'll be the person who comes in and pitches my brilliant plan and you be the super rich fabulous shark business person expert ceo So, uh, yeah, if you could just take a second to go put on your imaginary business suit. Good. Okay, great. And uh, can you grab your imaginary briefcase? You left it at home. Yeah, no, it's too late for you to go back and get it. Um, I'm going to continue on uh, without the briefcase, and I'm just going to be really brave about it. But uh, thanks for trying. Thanks for trying. Uh, We were almost there. (laughs) It's fine. So, okay. I actually have never seen an episode of Shark Tank. I just, I get the gist. But if there's any, like, music, like, you know, at the beginning of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire when all the lights shine down and it's like, doo-doo-doo-doo-doo-doo. Cue that. Great. Okay. Hello. Hi. I'm Christina, and I have an amazing business proposition for you. You know how people have like bachelorette parties and bridal showers and baby showers? Well, I would like an equivalent of that for single people. I know, I cannot be the first person to think of this at all, but I I just really want to make it a thing. And uh, I've been thinking about names for it. I have a lot of ideas, but... uh. So far, I have single shower, solo shower. I saw an amazing post on Instagram where someone wanted to throw a a business shower. So if someone's like starting their own business, that is like a baby. So um, someone else uh, suggested baby less shower. Interesting. Maybe a little dark. I don't know. But whatever we call it, I have some thoughts on what this, I'm going to call it a single shower for the purposes of this business proposal, Um, but what the single shower should entail. So um, I think it should be for someone when they have a big life change, and I think it should be something where, you know, okay, let's... um, I don't know. Let's think of a hypothetical person just totally made up, like someone who maybe uh, got broken up with out of the blue and moved to a new city unexpectedly. Like, I know that's hard to imagine. It's, it's not very realistic, but just just if you could just pretend for me. Um, so what she would do is she would call her friends and she'd be like, I'm pulling the shower card. I'm using it right now. I really need it. I have nothing to my name. Please help. And then her friends would know exactly what to do because they've thrown these showers for babies and and brides and, uh, you know, lots of other people. So I think you can only really use the card once, probably. But um, you shouldn't have to do anything. Like, your friends should arrange it for you. It doesn't have to be a big party. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a party at all. (laughs) 
Um, but if you want to have a get together, I think that's that could be really fun. Obviously, be safe, wear masks, probably do it outside. Um, but uh, I've been asking around, uh, you know, like what kind of things people like to do at bridal and baby showers. And um, I've heard about some some games like fiance trivia, um, giving like sexy lingerie gifts. Um, guessing how much the baby will weigh, making bets on that. Um, ooh, ooh, and people like contribute to a honeymoon fund. I think instead of a honeymoon fund, we should have a pay my gas bill fund. Basically, you just pay my gas bill or like whoever's, you know, whoever's throwing the single shower. And I think instead of sexy lingerie maybe get some comfy target undies i feel like if you know your size in target the undies always fit nice and are and they have really cute comfy ones i don't know it's usually like five for 20 so it's a good deal um mm -hmm. uh maybe a game like a fun game everyone could play would be who can make the best Tinder bio for the newly single person? Sounds fun. You could uh, guess how much their next partner will weigh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's, nah, there might not be a next partner, you know, so uh, that'd be weird to talk about. Um, I recently went to my brother's wedding and one of my favorite parts were that everyone gave toasts and, you know, when you're going through a tough time, maybe a bunch of people saying nice things to you could be really useful. And everyone likes drinking champagne, so I think toast would be good. Toast would be really good. And, uh, you know, I don't think you even need to worry about a present, really. Like, I, maybe the person could register, again, a, a Target or... Um, I, I, honestly, I think you should just go for gift cards or cash. Just put their Venmo up on the wall somewhere. And then, you know, as the toasts go on, maybe people will contribute more and more to the Venmo. See, these are, I'm just spitballing here. I think it's all, I think it's all leading to something that could be really amazing. Right? Right? Um, 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 um I, I know what you're thinking because you're a business person. Um, wasn't this already in an episode of Sex in the City? And kind of, yeah, um, there was that episode where Carrie goes to a baby shower and then uh, she doesn't get to have her shoes. I don't really remember the details, but I do know the title. Uh, it's called A Woman's Right to Shoes because at the end of the episode, she registers at Manoa Blahnik <laughs> and her friend has to buy her a new pair of shoes, which chef's kiss. If somebody sent me that letter, I would be completely obliterated. If someone was like, you have to buy me a new pair of Manolo Blahniks, I would just, I would crumble. But that's on me and my financial ruin, honestly. Brilliant idea. She didn't throw herself a real shower. We are building upon that idea. And this could be like really, really good for the economy. Yeah, let me explain. So in China, there is a holiday called Singles Day. Not craft Singles Day, just Singles Day like people. And it's on November 11th because it's 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1. You know, because single person's just one. One is the loneliest number, etc. And uh, I didn't know this until recently, but it is the largest retail day, both in stores and online, like in the whole world, like it's bigger than Christmas. So imagine if we had something like that, like think of the small businesses, really think of the small businesses and then think of the children and think about their businesses. And then stop thinking about that because that's ridiculous. I do think that November 11th might not be the best date for the United States. 
I was thinking a summer date would be nice because um, my 10 year old cousin recently pointed out to me that there are really no good holidays during the summer. And here I was thinking that summer itself was a holiday until I became an adult. Then then that illusion was completely shattered. But you know, she really has a point because, you know, we have the 4th of July, but you don't get presents on the 4th of July. You don't get to, I don't know, like plan really. Or, or maybe you do. Maybe you're really into it. Um, I just think maybe an August date would be nice. What do we think? August? Yes. I I see the interest in your eyes. I see you're you're into this. Um uh yeah, I I'm sure another question you have is will this be destroying a beautiful ancient tradition of showers? <laughs> I have really good news for you. No, the tradition of showers Uh, comes from one of two places, according to our (laughs) intense research. The first uh, could refer to this very interesting (laughs) thing that people did in the 19th century. Uh, A bride would stand under an umbrella filled with presents, and they would open the umbrella and she would be showered with gifts, like literally. And she would just have to cross her fingers that her Aunt Bonnie didn't get her that KitchenAid she wanted. Because otherwise she's going to have a concussion. I guess she could also wear a helmet. We could see the helmet businesses could be skyrocketing if this became part of the single shower situation. The other uh, place where we probably got the idea for showers goes all the way back to when... Women were basically traded as a commodity and marriages were more like a business thing. And uh, what would happen is if a woman didn't have a big enough dowry for her husband to be interested, she would raise her market value by asking her friends and family to bring over presents that then she didn't even get to keep because it was part of her dowry. So I don't know if someone like brought over a goat. By goat, it's the husband's now. Uh, Just like the bride. Kind of the same. The goat and the bride were basically looked at as the same thing. And I'm fine. My blood pressure is not skyrocketing thinking about that. So as you can see, we would not be trampling on some like deeply meaningful tradition or anything even remotely close, right? If anything, this would just be a really cool update, modernizing it, like keeping up with the times. That's always a good idea, right? Right? You're very tempted to get your checkbooks out, aren't you? You bunch of sharks. Shark tail. So why is this on my mind? Please imagine me on Shark Tank the show going into this monologue here. So why is this on my mind? Well, sharks. Remember that hypothetical person I told you to think about at the beginning of this incredible, very professional business pitch? Well, that girl is not hypothetical at all. Because that girl is me. (laughs) That girl is me. I was dumped seemingly out of the blue. And I moved to a new city with nothing, with nothing. And it was, it was, uh, it was really a lot. It was a lot. I moved into a completely empty apartment. All I had were a bunch of t-shirts, a pair of jeans, and some pajamas that I bought at Ross for fun. 
with my friend Anna. I stayed in Anna's house for about a month after the breakup because she's an angel and she just had all the things. Like she had a set of silver forks and knives and spoons, but she also has a set of rainbow forks and knives and spoons. So I was like really taken care of. And she had a lot of snacks and she always has bubbly water in the fridge. And that's the kind of person I want to be. And it was just really nice. And also she has, you know, Nisky the dog. And it was very comforting. Moving into a completely empty apartment, I realized really quickly how many little things I had been taking for granted. Like, the first night I moved in, I had nothing to cook with, and I also had, like, no real food. So I ordered a burrito bowl, but then I had gone to... Where did I even go? Oh, yeah, I went to Fred Meyer. Have you ever heard of Fred Meyer? I had never heard of Fred Meyer, and now... I owe my life to Fred Meyer, Freddy, my my boy, Fred. I only had a giant plastic bright blue because uh, why not? Cooking spoon. So I ate my dinner with a giant cooking spoon. I <laughs> I bought a giant rug for my living room at Ross because it was really affordable and pretty. <laughs> And I, I bought throw pillows and I bought a bunch of fake plants, but then I didn't have a can opener. Like, I never realized. I've just been taking that totally for granted. And I, I don't know, the last time I bought a can opener was when I moved all the way across the country from Maryland to Los Angeles. And that was an exciting new chapter of my life. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was out there for grad school. I had planned it. I had chosen it. I had applied. I had achieved this big goal. And moving into an apartment by myself that I wasn't really expecting, (laughs) it is exciting in a lot of ways. But figuring out things like why I need to pay like frickin' $60 for internet and uh, whether or not I need an air conditioning system and uh, do I need one trash can or two so I can do recycling stuff, that was so hard. There were so many decisions and they were really little, right? Like, yeah, I want the white can opener. Or, yeah, I do want that extra trash can so I can do recycling responsibly. But they all build on each other. And just like the numbers on the receipts that it's like, yeah, the trash can's $10 and like the can opener is $5. And then suddenly you're like, wow, I just gave Fred Myers like 500 of my dollars. That is crazy. All of those decisions kind of snowball into a giant, uncontrollable, just anxiety and and it's exhausting. And I am so, 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 so lucky that I had friends who helped and not just friends who were willing to help. I had a lot of friends who were like, hey, what can I do? But I, I had friends who had the time and and capacity to spend quite a bit of time and energy helping me, which I will never forget and I hope to pay forward just forever, maybe with this idea. I just wish that there was a structured, socially acceptable way to ask for help, especially as a single person. I can't imagine how much more difficult this would have been if I had kids or if I had owned a house or just so many different factors. I just feel like I was so lucky and I have had a lot of practice 
asking for help with my mental health. And in that way, I'm also really lucky. I have worked for years on being able to accept help because <laughs> uh, definitely have a little problem where I'll ask for help and then I don't think I deserve it. So I like accept like 2% of the help and then I'm like, I can handle it from here. No, 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 no. I don't want to bother you. No, 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 no. But if it was like, yeah, we're throwing you a small party and it's just this one afternoon and by the end of the afternoon, you'll have all the things you need to live in a kitchen with stuff like and a little extra money to pay some of your bills like how cool would that be how cool would that be and i just want to reiterate like i i would have loved that wait maybe this is me not accepting help but even though i would have really loved that i feel like i got so lucky and that i didn't need it everything has been working out okay and the help that i've received like my friend Anna, <laughs> oh my gosh, going to Ross at like 11 p.m. to help pick out like a small couch for my living room. Like, that was my single shower, <laughs> pretty much. Want to improve your mental health but don't know where to start? The Dive Through app helps you self regulate your emotions using feeling tracking, journaling, and interactive courses that are developed by mental health professionals. With Dive Through, you can feel confident that you have the tools to live a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. It was such a sad time in my life, and I'm definitely still recovering, but it would have been really cool to have had a time to celebrate a change. Change is scary. And yeah, we celebrate getting married and we celebrate having babies because, I don't know, it feels like a, such a duh. Like, yeah, that's a huge life change. And there's a lot of good stuff about it. And there's a lot of scary stuff about it. But just for right now, we're just going to celebrate the fun stuff. And we're just going to celebrate that you're strong enough to do it. I don't know. I think my idea for single showers. <clears throat> I'm still speaking to a group of business people. Remember. I think single showers also appeal to me because. Even when I was in a really long term relationship, I knew that I wasn't going to be getting married anytime soon. We can talk about that during another episode. But there was always this suspicion that I've had that women especially who get married and who have kids are worth more than a single person. Even... Even me having like a person, like a long-term relationship and a career that I've put like my whole self into, I don't know, I never felt like worthy of that kind of party, that kind of celebration. And I don't want you to feel that way ever because it's not true. You are doing so freaking great and I want to celebrate you group of business people. <laughs> I want to find ways to celebrate you and you deserve presents and you deserve toasts. I just thought of another situation that we could have a shower. Um, if you're starting antidepressants, <laughs> that could be a shower. That could be the day you pull the card. I want to shower. I want to celebrate. I just have to ask, why not? Why not? Think about it. Get your checkbooks out. <laughs> Did I, am I winning? Do I get any points on Shark Tank? Hmm. 
I know I talked about in a different episode that I would like to run a crying club in Japan. Maybe this is a more realistic business idea. Maybe I could create single shower kits. I could design all of the decorations. I could write out the invitation so you don't have to. And the invitation could literally just say like, help. I need help. I'm going through a huge life change and it's scary and I need you. And I also need financial help. And I also need a KitchenAid. Thank you, Aunt Bonnie, for the KitchenAid in advance. <laughs> Seriously, though, like I... I was recently talking to a friend who I freaking love and I love his wife and their wedding was one of the best days of my life, I think. It was so much fun and so wonderful and such a celebration of love and joy and togetherness. And uh, he was like pointing out all these things in his kitchen that he got as a gift. And it was just a little soul crushing. Like, you know that you can be two things at once. And in that moment, I was equally so happy for him and his wife because they deserve it completely. And also just kind of defeated because I felt like I haven't done anything like that to deserve that kind of treatment. Oh my God, am I going to cry? Oh boy, I really need to start looking for a therapist. This is Okay, I'm cr- I'm going to cry. That's fine. That's okay. Crying is cool. At one point when I was talking to a different friend. Now I'm just talking about all my friends. I was talking to a different friend and she was kind of questioning why I wasn't going to get married. And I honestly didn't really have a good answer for her. And I was thinking about how if I was going to have a celebration where I would throw a big party for myself not necessarily like a single shower more like a wedding where I pay to have caterers come and I pay for the fancy napkins and I pay for a DJ and all that and I was like I think I will throw myself that kind of party when I make a movie I think I need to make a whole movie before I deserve that kind of treatment and Since then, my life has taken so many weird turns and my day-to-day has become so much even more ingrained in working inside the internet. And I don't know that making a movie is even like in my five-year plan or even my like 50-year plan anymore. Like I have a five-year plan. Come on. But I really did feel like I had to accomplish something that huge to deserve that kind of help and that kind of celebrating. So, the moral of this story is, what should we call them? (laughs) Solo showers? Single showers? We could still call it a baby shower. Like, I feel like I'm a big baby. Right? That could work. So I want you to think about it. I want you to go home. I want you to talk to some some pals. I want you to think about what you want. And let's circle back. Ooh, look at me using some corporate jargon. Let's circle back on this and make it happen. I don't know why, but all of a sudden it feels really important to me. I wonder how long I'll be invested in this. Ooh, glad I wore waterproof mascara. Okay, thank you so much for coming to my business proposal. There's wine and cheese at the door because I care about you and I, I want you to be happy and I love you so much. And I hope that's not too forward since we just met and this is an episode of a TV show. I'm curtsying gracefully. Okay. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, 
left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right. See you next week. Love you. Bye.